Well, this is very special. Now it may look like a rusty old lump of cast iron, which is basically what it is. Well, two rusty old lumps of cast iron. But this is a very rare engine indeed. It was made in America in somewhere between the 1920s and the 1930s. It was made by the Rotor Corporation, who hail from Dayton, Ohio. And it is a vacuum rotor engine. Now, as I said, these are very, very rare and they simply don't come up for sale very often at all. But I am in debt once again to my great good friend, Stuart Owens, who saw this on eBay. He's already got one in his collection, but he saw this one on eBay and he snapped it up without a second thought and then got in touch with me via email and said, would I like it? And I said, are you kidding? <laughs> This is an amazing, these are amazing engines. Very unusual, uh, the whole mechanism is, is unusual. And there's another very rare and unusual thing about this particular engine, and that is, it is the only flame liquor engine I have ever seen that has a whistle. Yep, that is a whistle. Now, this one is pretty much complete. It's only really missing the burner. And as it comes around, I'll show you. The burner is a little, little sort of brass pot affair with a single wick, which screws into, this is a threaded hole here, which screws into this hole. And that's missing, but that would be fairly easy to make. You'll also notice it has a hole here at the end of the cylinder. <laughs> now, that was not there originally. I actually drilled that. When it came, the piston was seized solid in the cylinder. Now I managed to, I soaked it in penetrating oil and, uh, and, and worked away at it and I managed to free the, the piston up so it would actually move, but it simply, I could not get it out of the cylinder. It just refused point blankly to come out of the cylinder. The con rod is only riveted on with a very crude bracket to the back of the piston. So I figured that the, the, the least destructive way to do this I tried heating it up, I tried absolutely everything, it just would not come out. So I've drilled a small, this is an 8mm hole, which I can easily plug up, and it's the, the, the back wall of the cylinder, this casting is very thick, so I can tap that and put a small plug in there, so I'm not too bothered about that, and the piston does not come all the way back anyway to the back of the uh, cylinder. But I was a then able to get a nice drift in, and I was able to drift it gently out, uh, and I did manage to get the, the, the piston out finally. So that's what that hole is doing there. But yes, it just needs cleaning up. There is a chunk missing out of the flywheel, which is unfortunate. I, I might have a go at building that with braze. I don't know, I haven't really decided yet what we're gonna do about that. Everything else is there. It, it, it is basically complete apart from, as I said, the burner. Oh, the, this is the pulley on the flywheel. It's all chewed up. I think someone's probably had a go at getting it off and it was obviously rusted in place and it's just been chewed to death. But we can easily make a new one of those. That's not a problem. So yes, I am extremely excited about this engine. Hope to get it running. I haven't had a lot of luck with flame liquors, much like my friend Rob. <laughs> but, but I have seen these running on, on YouTube, so I'm, I'm hopeful. And I'm also hopeful that I can find one that's a, at least a picture of one that's in really good condition. So I can recreate the nameplate, which as the thing comes around, you'll see is still on the, the, the actual engine, but it's just, it is of this was obviously this is tin plate or aluminium and it's just the actual original print has just gone completely so so there you go vacuum rotor engine from the rotor corporation of daytona ohio uh from around about 1920 1930 that sort of era so let's get on and get it restored and hopefully running I thought it might be interesting just to see how much the main casting for the vacuum rotor engine actually weighs because it's a really hefty lump of uh, cast iron you know this thing weighs a bloody ton in my might just to pick it up so i've got this old neo post set of scales which uh, i acquired during my years in uh, it support and back in the day this would have been used by small businesses to calculate postage for various different parcels because basically not only is it at scales but it will also calculate postage rates for you however this is reliant on the rom inside it being updated regularly and of course it's way out of date now so the postage rates that it calculates are quite a way off so we'll we'll, we'll turn the thing on 
and we'll let it go through its startup routine, which takes a while. Right, we're there. So we'll stick the casting on. Oh my god. And it says 2.59 kilos. Uh, let's uh, see if we can zoom in on the display for you. And £7.20 if you wanted to send it via parcel force. <laughs> That was back then. It would be considerably more than that now. But yes, it's a it's a heavy lump, 2.59 kilos. This is this is not a light casting. Yeah, I've got the engine stripped down, and all the other parts are having their vinegar bath at the moment too remove all the rust obviously this is way too big to to, to, to do that and uh, this will probably go in the grip blasting cabinet to get this one cleaned up but uh, anyway I just thought you'd be interested to see how, how, how actual how much it actually weighed so there you go 2.59 kilos well here are the parts <clears throat> that are stripped down off of the vacuum rotor engine and they've had two days literally soaking in a vinegar bath and I never I never cease to be amazed by the ability of vinegar to get rid of the rust every single item you can see on this table here was completely and utterly caked in rust when it went into the vinegar bath now obviously I'm going to do some work on the wire wheel and with a with a rotary wire brushes on the flywheel because there's a little there's a little bit of rust still left on the flywheel. In fact, there is some paint showing. I mean, some of this is actually paint because the, the, this would have been painted red originally. In fact, you can see some vestiges of the red paint around the boss there. But no, I mean this. I mean, just just amazing. This was completely brown when it went in. Um, um, as was the uh, the flame shield. Again, totally rusted completely uh, and that's come up really well yeah so well pleased with that well worth the effort say so two days i left it in and then uh, as i took the parts out i, I used a, a soft brass wire brush to just you know tease off any remaining rust that hadn't floated away um you know i mean this this was com again this was completely caked in rust when it went in so yeah those parts are ready to hit the wire wheel and just to do the final cleanup, but I'm very pleased with that. Um, I've still got to do something about the casting. As I said, that's got to go, I think that's gonna to have to go into the grip blaster block because it's box because it's just too big for, for anything else. But it's, yeah, we've made a start on it. The vacuum rotor engine is very nearly ready to go back together. Now it's taken me an awful long time and a lot of hard work to get it into this situation. But these type of engines, and when you get this kind of um, situation with a, with a very old engine that is in, in, in quite a bad way, they are the most rewarding because if it actually runs at the end of the day, then the, the achievement, the feeling of achievement is, fa is fantastic. There were several problems with this. I mean, it was rusted, although everything on it was completely rusted. So that was one of the first problems. The piston, which is this very thin little bucket there, was seized in the cast iron ball. And although I was able to free it up uh, slightly, I, I, I just couldn't get the thing out. And in the end, as you saw, it's just gone round. I had to drill a hole in the center of the end of the uh, casting which is basically the, in the center of the bore cylinder bore and drift it out and i it took me many hours of working on the cylinder and the piston before i could actually get the piston to slide freely back in the bore again uh, there was a lip on the piston which is what was causing the problem the piston is very difficult to hold in the lathe and there's very little, it's a very, very thin walled. So I was just skimming it very, very lightly to try and get rid of the lip and I honed out the bore. But of course the problem is you don't want it too loose. <laughs> That's the last thing you want. It needs to be an easy fit. Bear in mind that this is a flame liquor uh, and that therefore it effectively runs dry. There's no oil in there. 
So we're very nearly there. It slides in and out. I think it's still a little stiff at the moment, so I'm going to hone the bore a little bit more before I'm, I'm actually put it all back together. So what else has been done? As you can see, I've made a burner for it. Now again, that that's sort of guesswork and, and, and just going on the pictures I've seen of the original uh, burner. I don't know, this, this part of the casting is hollow underneath the burner and this bit here, this black lip here, that's threaded. So I don't know whether the hollow part of the casting was originally the reservoir for the burner and then it's just like a top that's screwed in uh, or, or whether it was, in fact, that the, the burner was completely separate, uh, which is what I've done with this one. Uh, let's pull this out, as you can see. I've basically made a little reservoir which goes in the hole. This is in two parts, the top, isn't, they're not attached yet. Which fits in that hole there, and that's going to be the burner. The original burner also had an adjustable wick. Now, the brass tube which forms the flame the tube that holds the wick and my burner can be moved up and down so I can adjust that level of the wick it's too high at the moment I think it needs to come down a bit so I'm hoping that that will work okay uh, but yeah uh, what else oh yes the the flywheel wait until it comes around there was a big chunk missing out of the flywheel and I scratched my head over that um, I don't think my brazing kit is will produce enough hit the heat to, to, to braise something of the mass of this flywheel. So basically I cut out a very small section of aluminium and then filed the little semicircle there and I've glued it in using chemical metal. It's blended in quite well. Um, obviously aluminium doesn't look anything like cast iron but um, there is, a, there is a, a highly complicated and complex procedure you can use to make it. You can see that that's the bit there, that's the actual added part. Uh, you can make it look like cast iron. Uh, basically you, you, you just use a pencil, a soft leaded pencil and you just colour it in basically. <laughs> and, it, and it's not exactly the same but it's 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 a lot less like aluminium and a lot more like cast iron <laughs> once you've done that. So yeah so the flywheel has been repaired. Um, I have made it's not on the uh, turntable but if I can grab it there we go. I have made a little plug which goes in the uh, goes in the end of the casting here to, to plug up my hole. The piston does not come all the way back to the back of the cylinder, so the cylinder bore. So yeah, that should be fine. So we're nearly there. We're very very nearly there. Uh, hopefully the next time you see it, it will be fully assembled and possibly even running. The vacuum rotor engine is finished. <laughs> It's been a long hard road this one. Um, this uh, has required far more work than any of the other engines that I've done recently. As you know when I first got it it was in quite a bit of a state. This just big one big lump of rusty cast iron. Lots of issues with it. The piston was seized in the cylinder bore. The only way I could get it out was to drill a hole which is what this plug is covering up in the back of the cylinder and drift it out. The piston had a lip on it, which was extremely difficult to to get um, to get sorted because it's very difficult to hold. The, the piston is um, very thin walled steel. It's very difficult to hold it in the lathe. So I did a combination of very lightly skimming the piston and uh, honing the, the bore. Bef and it took me several hours of this before I could actually get the piston to slide up and down inside the bore again. Now. Seems to be quite free now, uh, not too free. It's it's it, it, it's a good fit in there. And I've taken the whistle off because there's a ball underneath this whistle, which is designed to act as a one-way valve so that it closes when the piston comes out of the cylinder and then it opens when the piston goes back into the cylinder to effectively let the exhaust out. Certainly when you spin it, uh, the ball pops up and down as the piston goes back into the cylinder. So I'm assuming that there's a reasonably, the cylinder is a reasonably good fit in the bore. What else? Uh, the flywheel had a lump out of it, which was here, and I've filled that. I basically used a piece of aluminium, which I filed to shape, and then glued it in with chemical metal, and used a very specialized and uh, complex technique to make the aluminium look like 
the cast iron of the flywheel. I used a pencil on it, <laughs> which actually worked quite well. So, so that's that. What else have we done? Oh yes, well there was no burner. So I had to manufacture a burner for it, which uh, I've, I've just made out of brass basically. We'll stop it when it gets round. There we go and the other thing that was missing and i didn't realize this until i looked at the my own photographs that i took of this thing was the actual valve this this orange piece of dural here that that should is normally black on the actual original engine and that is the valve which which opens and closes the flame inlet port on the side of the cylinder that was completely missing so i've had to fabricate one which i i hope will will do do the trick but the problem is there's so many variables in getting this thing running. This is the timing, this D-shaped track that is cast into the center of the flywheel. And I have no idea, although I took pictures of it when I first got it, I have no idea whether that was correct. There was no, there wasn't um, a grub screw in the flywheel. So the flywheel was free to turn on the shaft. So obviously that would, you know, that wasn't correct. And the only thing I've got to go on is pictures of these online and looking at videos of the ones that actually run to work out whether or not I've got the timing correct. I've also, uh, I don't know exactly what height the flame should be at. So there's lots of lots of variables. And um, uh, sadly, at this moment in time, I cannot get the thing to run. I'm not gonna give up on it. I'm gonna persevere with it. Uh, I know my friend Stuart who, uh, who got this engine for me, he's got one and he his one actually runs. So uh, he's, he's away at the moment, uh, but uh, when he gets back home, I'm hoping that he can provide me with some information about the timing, the exact position of the flywheel in relation to the crank. So, but for now, it, it's done and dusted. Uh, I'm, I'm very pleased. I, I enjoyed doing the restoration. Uh, these are very, uh, engines like this, I mean, it's just such an old engine and it's so rare. Uh, and, it, and it's a challenge, you know, when, when, you, when, you, when you first get it and the thing's a rusty lump of cast iron. So yeah, I've enjoyed doing it and, and I'm very pleased with the results. Uh, I just wish I could get the thing to run. <laughs> so th this is it. This is the end of part one for the vacuum uh, rotor flame liquor engine. We will come back, hopefully in the not too distant future, when I've actually got the bloody thing running. <laughs> so I so, hope you've enjoyed it anyway, and thanks very much for watching. Cheers. <laughs>